Love this frame. Yeah, you love the frame. Love the frame. God. Great work. I'm so incredible. No, don't enter. Don't <laughs> enter. I said I love the frame. I need to enter as the co-host and, you know, face of the channel. The face of the channel. Yes, the face, darling. Can't beat this. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Game Mats. It's Matt Steele. It's Matt Palmer. And you might remember, I think it's almost two years ago now. Oh my god. I know. We did a video where we talked about, we listed a bunch of our favorite pop stars and we talked about our favorite songs from each pop star. And because the video couldn't be half an hour long, <laughs> we couldn't talk about all of our favorite pop stars, so we're gonna do a part two. I know, I feel like this is the season, it's the holiday season, we're being thankful, we're just trying to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, we talk about positive things. Yes, and we want to tell the world all the great pop songs that maybe you haven't heard by our favorite artists. Exactly. Because you need to know them. Exactly. Number one, this era is Britney Spears. Without the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Selena Gomez. Okay. What is your favorite? Oh, Selena Gomez song. I have mentioned in multiple videos how Hands to Myself is my favorite Selena Gomez It's excellent. Song. But I have to say. Oh, wow, things are changing. I have revisited. Good for you. Good for you is excellent. Many times. Good for you is excellent. And I'm just like, it might be beating Hands to Myself. It is so utterly brilliant and breathtaking, yes. that song. Especially as like the introduction to like, this is the first single of the album, this is the sound we're going with. You're kind of like, Selena. <laughs> Are we cool now? Are you great now? Like, when did this happen? That second verse, I know. when it just like, the production just like swallows I you whole, it. it's just it. like... <gasps> I have also been a long proponent of Team Hands to Myself, and I also have had a change of heart. The uniqueness and weirdness of Bad Liar. Bad Liar! <laughs> oh, that's my favorite song of the year. Damn. It is excellent. And the first time you heard it, you were just like, Selena but Gomez put out a song. It's really weird. I don't know how I feel about it. And that's the thing. The second I listened to it, I was like, this is incredible. And he was like, okay, I need to think about it. I need to marinate um, it. He marinated it. I Carla, did. And he's almost cooked. I feel like I felt the same way about Umbrella when I first started it. I was like, this is weird. I don't know if I like it. And I think that means I super like it. And I'm just not ready to And you're like scared. It. I'm scared. Don't be scared. Love's always right around the riverbed. Yeah, no, bad. You get scared. <laughs> <laughs> you homo. <laughs> Number two. Mm. No doubt front woman, Gwen Stefani. What's your favorite Gwen Stefani solo jam? <sighs> Hollaback Girl's such a classic. It is an actual, literal, classic, defined in there. It's G It's one of the most genius pop songs I you. will ever live through. And it brought us London Bridge. It brought us so many great songs that got screamed over a beat. <laughs> and I loved that time. It might be Hollaback. Hollaback Girl's excellent. Like, I, yeah. Uh, because, like, I could say, like, things that, like, followed, like, Yummy is great. Well, we're gonna talk about Yummy soon. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, Yummy... <laughs> is my favorite because I feel like Gwen Stefani's second solo album is kind of slept on besides the title track. But I don't know why Yummy wasn't released! Yummy is great. Yummy is Yummy excellent. Is I so feel great. like it is the heir apparent to Holla Back Girl. Pharrell's verse is incredible. The beats are just like lighter and more like ding! <laughs> exactly! It's more like a bubble computer moment and it's just... I'm feeling Yummy had a toe. Yeah. Okay, number three. A great artist we have not mentioned in our favorite video before. Kesha. Since talking to you and li listening to her full discography yes. after knowing her, I love Dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur is so great. Dinosaur is, dinosaur is, so is good. great. I think I want to make it my karaoke song, my go-to karaoke song. I feel like I do a great job with it. I believe you. I could see you doing a parody video of it if it was, you know, 2009. D-I-N-O-S-A, you are a dinosaur. My favorite catch a song, I also feel like, I don't know if I've ever performed it at karaoke, but it's one I would love to. It's a song entitled Sleazy. <laughs> And I love it so much because it's like probably her most rap forward song and it's just so funny and fun and like I have no idea how she pulled this off but Andre 3000 is on the remix and it's like how did you get Andre 3000 to be on the Kesha remix? It's all attitude and it's just like you know what? You let's get sleazy! <laughs> the next artist that we love, I of course very much love this young lady. Alanis Morissette. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that couch. <laughs> the, like, the couch is just so... You and the couch. Like, you are just giving us your truth, Alanis, and you are not giving two shits. That whole second album is just like a stream of consciousness, and it's just... Amazing. It's like a two-game mats video set to music. Right. If you put all the words in this video under the music, it'd probably be shorter than the couch. My favorite Alanis Morissette song is a song entitled Uninvited. You know I love a funeral march. <laughs> 
You know I love a high head voice. You know I love an emotional, heart-wrenching, like, searing ballad. And that's uninvited. Just the, just I need a moment to, to deliberate. <laughs> yes! There are just so many quiet moments where it's like, do, 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 do. It's like, yes! Keep them on the edge of their seats. Yeah. Let that man be frightened of you. What Scare them. Our young queen. <laughs> Miss Jojo, Jojo, who's back in our lives yet again. My favorite Jojo song, okay. actually, yeah. I think it might be Honest. Oh, Honest is I good. I think it might be Honest. Wow. I love Honest. I'm like, that's the one I keep like revisiting all the time right. when it's on like my shuffle. I'm yeah. just like, I'm gonna listen to all six minutes of this. Wow. <laughs> like, I went a little further back. <laughs> on the high road, there's a song entitled Coming For You. Coming For You was very much like a, a, a electric guitar, R&B, in the vein of like Sugar Babes About You Now. That's the kind of production I really love. I love a lush production that draws inspiration from different genres and has some electric guitar but still is an R&B song. And I think Coming For You does a beautiful job of that. There's also a song on her first album called Never Say Goodbye. And I just feel like we all need to listen and realize that this 13 year old girl is making R&B music as good as people twice to three times her age. <laughs> and it's just like, this could be an SWV song, this could have been a Monica song, and then she performs it with such gusto and it's like, how do you feel this? And you know I hate children who sing, but Jojo is the exception that proves the rule. She at 13 is as intelligent and as knowledgeable a performer and vocalist as anybody. All right, we have the little Mariah herself. <laughs> Ariana Grande. Ariana. It's your favorite Ariana Grande song. My absolute favorite Ariana Grande song, without a doubt, know, objectively, like, is One Last Time. One Last Time is actually. One Last Time, it's like it comes on my shuffle and I legit repeat it three times in a row. Because I'm just like, oh, I need to feel this feeling one more time. I think it is such a phenomenal song. It's great. I feel like it's such a good mix of like melody and beat. Because a lot of times when you get like a big dance song like that, you're not too worried about the melody, but this could be a ballad and still stand up talk. Oh yeah, and like it's, it's a perfect, also like a perfect blend of very meaningful, but still easy to swallow. Yeah, Like it's, it just works so well. I love this song. One last time is definitely in my top two or three, but I feel like as time has gone on, Into You really <laughs> just speaks to me in a way that it's just, they would just line me up. I feel like it's just Pinnacle Ariana and the fact that it wasn't a hit will forever haunt me. It's just like, this should have been a bigger hit than it was. And how guilty do you feel that we gave it kind of like, oh yeah, this is pretty good. I, you well, want to I literally in the comments like a week below was like, I'm now obsessed with this song. <laughs> so it's like, I, I let everyone know, like, yes, this song is iconic. Um, Lord, <laughs> she's weird. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to ask me, uh, probably like a couple months ago, I still would have been like, go to tennis court. <laughs> tennis court. You, I love tennis court. And he always gives me shit about tennis it. Court's tennis court's court's great. Ridiculous. Tennis court's great. Yeah. Since melodrama has come out, it has sat with me for a while. I think I think sober is her best song. Sober's great. I think sober, sober is, is my favorite song of hers. I think sober's it's so great. interesting. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so weird. But so much fun. I could write a dissertation on Supercut. <laughs> <laughs> like Supercut is like the Robin dancing on my own up here. <laughs> like it's like this feeling we've all felt. Once you're out of a relationship and all you remember is like the highlights and you're like, oh, this relationship was perfect. All I remember is the super cut of us. And it's like, of course, in between this, it was garbage. It breathes so much life. Jack Antonoff's production is so modern and driving and beautiful and just, you can, it paints a picture for you, that song. It's like 1989 on steroids. Like, it's, I really, really love it. Kelly Clarkson. I can't believe we didn't mention Kelly Clarkson in our first video. Yeah, that's weird. It's bizarre, right? That's very weird. What's your favorite? Every time I hear the words, this is beautiful, this is beautiful. <laughs> I'm just like, Ooh. I know. And specifically the live version. The, no, the live version. Right, yeah, I mean, this is what so I'm talking about. It was the first time I saw like Kelly Clarkson sort of grow into herself and like she's no longer the American Idol winner. She is a superstar. It's like I am feeling things, yeah. I am performing this for you. That is what Beautiful Disaster is, on top of being a phenomenal song. Yes, my Kelly of choice 
is a song entitled Sober. <laughs> Another Sober. Every song titled Sober is excellent. It's great. It's, oh, yeah. You cannot, if you write a song called Sober, if it's not excellent, don't release it. <laughs> don't break the streak. I just feel like Kelly's Sober. It gives you such an emotional arc. It is not all about, like, the big pop chorus. She's coming off of this whole, like, breakaway era. And then she has the finale of the song, where it's just, like, three months. So I'm still standing here three months, and I still remember it three months, and I still am. And then she jumps that octave, and you're just like, ah! The jump, the jump of the octave is... Peak Kelly Oh moment. my god. Like, it's just it's like, like you feel, it's like she's in the room with you. She's just like <laughs> rattling the windows with her voice. Janet Jackson. Queen. What a freaking queen, Janet Jackson. I mean, Matt Palmer's introduction of Janet Jackson into my life it's just it has helped me so much. I, I mean, it's literally I, the least I can do. Of all the things you've made me listen to, the, my favorite song still that you have ever had me listen to was God Till It's Gone. God Till It's Gone. Is like, crazy. I think I was just like, this is a jam. That is a this fantastic is so cool. choice. But I have several favorite Janet Jackson songs. The first is a song called Love Will Never Do Without You. It is like six minutes, and it's just such a fun summer jam. When summer comes around, that's what I want to hear is Love Will Never Do Without You. On the Velvet Rope, which is another great album, I feel like I Get Lonely is just so good. And it's like, Janet Jackson is very much a pop star in a lot of ways, but sometimes she'll delve into R&B, and while, you know, she's not a Whitney, she's more it's of a like a... It's a light voice. It's a light voice, but it's, it's pretty. A, it's a sweet little mo vocal moment. Yes, no, it's pretty, I, but, and, but she puts it to great use on I Get Lonely. I feel like it is longing, it is sexy, it is like a timeless song with timeless production, and it just, it just holds up very nicely. Ah, I just love her song. <laughs> Queen, icon, legend, vocal bible, Whitney Houston. So my favorite Whitney Houston song is actually probably like what I feel like is an extremely, extremely subdued vocal performance, oh, which is interesting because she's Whitney Houston. Yes, a vocalist. Like, my love is your love. Oh, that's a great song. Is just to me one of the most beautiful like songs ever <laughs> produced. If it could be my wedding song. <laughs> <laughs> like you have like eleven wedding songs. Like I you go know. Through these fucking videos. Maybe I'll have eleven weddings. Oh, what? Like, that could happen. Maybe maybe the one where with uh, my love is your love will be the wedding that lasts. Oh, that'll be the marriage I hope that lasts. So. Yeah. I have a few Whitney favorite shock. I have nothing. Is just. <laughs> it's like the Olympics of songs. It's like the song goes in keys and goes to heights that just like not many people can even physically do. Another great song that I love, I've discussed on this channel, the live version of MTV, Why Does It Hurt So Bad? I always very much love. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a very emotional song, a very emotional vocal. Beautiful R&B, 95, Wind to a Tail moment. Around Christmas time, early, or like late Thanksgiving, early Christmas, I listen to a lot of The Preacher's Wife. I think the fact that Whitney released a gospel album in the end stages of her vocal peak is just such a gift and we need to revisit the Preacher's Wife soundtrack more often than not. And the single I Believe in You and Me, I really, <laughs> really love. I remember when we got uh, hardwood installed into our living room. <laughs> I remember we took all the furniture out of the room and then we got the hardwood installed. And, I was and like, you sang. I sang. We've done that in my house. <laughs> Oh. And that was the song I sang because my voice hadn't changed that night. Just oh, what a great time that <laughs> the was. The best time. Oh. And I hit every note, but not like Whitney Clint, but it still was like, just what a lovely song. You never sound better than in a newly hardwooded room with no furniture. <laughs> Before your voice has Before changed. Before your voice has changed. Mm. Everyone's and it, peak. And it all goes to hell when the voice changes. Well, not for me, I still sound great. <laughs> Guys, oh, thank you for watching. Thank you so, <laughs> much, so much for, for watching. watching. Tell us below your favorites from all of these artists. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you feel strongly? Do you feel weakly? Tell us below. <laughs> <Do you> feel <laughs> weakly. <laughs> you know? what, what artists uh, have we not talked about? I know. <laughs> Follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter at Matt Parham Music. And it's Matt Steele. And at Two Gay Matts. And on Instagram and all those handles. And um, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and are having a lovely holiday season. And we'll be back soon with a brand new Two Gay Matts. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good one.